You done fucked it up, Joe. I know you're on vacation from doing your angry reviews, but what the hell is that going to do for me? You're the only gaming reviewer I enjoy out there. Your funny skits and thoughtful insights make your videos extremely entertaining. However, another Uncharted game cannot slip away from your format. So I have taken it upon myself to do your show for you. Here's my angry review of Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Now, I realize I don't have Angry Joe's devilishly good looks or kick-ass jacket, but I'm going to proceed anyways. After Naughty Dog released Uncharted 4 Upon the World, we didn't think we'd see another in the series for quite a long time, except for some, you know, small story DLC and a little bit of multiplayer here and there. Fast forward just over a year later and we are gifted with The Lost Legacy, a brand spanking new tale featuring fan-favorite Chloe and fan-hated Nadine. While the other Nathan Drake outings featured a hefty $60 price tag, this one flies under the radar at a solid 40. Me, myself, I paid a cool 32 on Amazon Prime, and at that price point, you're getting a great value. I honestly would have been satisfied paying a full 60 for this game. What we have here is a celebration of the entire franchise, a tip of the hat to everything that came before. It really is a greatest hits collection of some of our fondest moments in this series. You get to relive some of the best action segments with new spins and settings. There's a new armored car attack, a helicopter battle, vehicle combat, and even another thrilling train chase. Sure, it's all been done before, but man was it fun to go back with these new characters. There isn't a lot of fresh ideas here, outside of an open environment section in Chapter 4 that I honestly didn't care for. I like my Uncharted linear, I've got shit to do. I don't want to bring up the map every five seconds to figure out where the hell I'm at. You're lost, aren't you? No, I'm not lost, other Adam, I'm thinking. Thinking about what? I'm thinking how easy it could have been for Naughty Dog to put a fucking waypoint GPS system into this game so I didn't drive around like a fucking idiot for 20 minutes trying to find the next place to go! Angry Joe skits are better. Sorry, what? What? Not only does this area of the game bring the momentum to a screeching halt, it's also just not that enjoyable to play. Granted, a majority of it can be completely avoided by not doing the fetch quests, but the whole thing seems completely unnecessary. It's almost like the Uncharted devs were just testing the waters a bit to see what an open world Uncharted game could feel like, and I hope they never go down that route. Once that area is cleared though, the game picks up and never lets go. It helps that Chloe Fraser is an absolute joy to both look at and listen to. Drake is a striking man, but if I'm gonna be scaling mountains, swinging through the jungle, swimming under ancient structures, and sliding through mud, it's nice to stare at a perfectly rendered woman's ass for a change. And Chloe is the full package, delivering not only well-timed punches, but one-liners. She's what I wish Lara Croft was like in the rebooted Tomb Raider series. Fraser always has something in insightful or clever to say, and I found myself giggling like a schoolgirl through the entire eight hours. You heard me. Eight hours. <laughs> now, 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 I know what you're thinking. Eight hours, that, that's going to be a turnoff for some people, but not this guy. I like my campaign story short and sweet, much like my imaginary lovemaking, and this is much more of a quality over quantity scenario. Also, much like my imaginary lovemaking. Hell, I would have been happy if Naughty Dog ripped out the scavenger hunt and rested this game at a comfortable six. The Uncharted games have always been at their best when Drake is bouncing dialogue off a trekking companion. Whether it's Elena, the love interest, or Sully, the father figure, the mentor. Here is no different. Naughty Dog understands that this is a value proposition and they keep it going with another road trip buddy cop scenario. Voice actress Laura Bailey does a perfectly fine job with her, she's just not very interesting. Claudia Black's Chloe Fraser gets all the great lines, and her backstory is far more compelling than that of Nadine's. That said, she's not awful by any means. Not a terrible person. She's just kind of there. She's that friend in the group that you tolerate, that you let come to parties, but you don't really acknowledge that much, kind of in the background. I'm a little disappointed they didn't take this opportunity to give us a first true co-op campaign, but at least her AI is sharp. In fact, I was caught off guard by just how useful she was in combat. There were multiple times where I was pinned down by gunfire only to have like two rounds left in the chamber. Luckily, out of nowhere, Nadine flanks a dude, snaps the neck, jump kicks another guy, and moves on to the next set. 
It's those types of small moments that really bring this package to another level. And this thing's already chock full of beautiful landscapes and intense cinematic situations. There are so many little details that kept me engaged too, such as a new lock picking mechanic that's simple to execute, but when put in a certain situation can be a welcome stress. I wish they would have gone further with this idea though, as it never gets more challenging and never ramps up later in the game. It's always the same. And it feels like another experiment instead of a fully invested idea. Since this is an Uncharted game, you can expect the same level of polish and fantastic storytelling the others contain. You take control of Chloe on her journey to seek out the fabled tusk of Ganesh, traveling deep into the thrilling jungles of India. And as always, there's deadly comp in your way. Comp, short for competition. Asav and his men will stop at nothing to find the tusk for his own mysterious purposes. He's another solid entry into the series of Hallmark villains. And then we have the puzzles, which are another staple of the franchise. They're never too tough, they're never too easy, they're just right. It's, it's very much the Goldilocks and the Three Bears scenario of, of video games. And they're mixed in well between the combat and the hiking. I quite enjoyed the statue axe swinging puzzle where you have to lead the protagonist to specific platforms or you seal your fate at the end of a blade. And if you're a trophy whore like myself, there's plenty more hours to squeeze out of this gem. Treasure hunting, weapon kills, jeep specific challenges, and of course beating the game on crushing will extend your game time. Now I haven't platinumed the game myself yet, but I looked at the trophy list and everything seems very reasonable. It also helps that if you previously beat the game, you can get points to unlock weapons and upgrades and you can use this in your next playthrough on crushing. For even more added value, Naughty Dog has included the entire multiplayer suite along with the new survival mode. I'm not huge into the multiplayer scene myself, but there's no negative to adding more gaming options for people. The same can be said for the baked in photo mode that's all the rage these days. You can pause the game at any time to snap a quick selfie. Not only that, but the devs have added in a myriad of features, everything from camera angles to filters to stupid faces you can put on on your character in case you don't get enough of those in your daily Instagram feed, you son of a bitch. I don't know why I'm mad at you about that. It's not like you're the one making the stupid duck faces, unless you are, in which case I'm disgusted. Shame on you. But also, I applaud your courage and your bravery, and I respect you for that. It's a very, it's a very confusing time we live in. If all of that wasn't enough, you also get a digital download for Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy, which has been up for the PS4, and I could not give less fucks about that. But I know there's people out there that do, so another, another thing, another little nugget for you to, to digest. As previously stated, I would have gladly paid for this at a AAA price, because this is a AAA game. For between $30 and $40, this is a treasure even Nathan Drake would come out of retirement for. It took me a while to come up with that line of dialogue, I was kind of proud of it. Subscribe. Or don't. It's your life. Do what you want. I think Uncharted gamers have become spoiled over the years by the level of craft that's on display. So a lot of folks kind of wrote this one off as a quick cash grab. That couldn't be further from the truth. As much as I loved Uncharted 4, it was never for the gameplay or the exciting moments. It was for the story and how well it capped off the franchise so well. But I never even went back to that one to platinum it or play it again on crushing like I did the previous three. Lost Legacy, however, is an easy replay with its shorter runtime and fantastic set pieces. Now, does it go overboard with ledge breaks, crate climbing, and last minute grabs? Of course. Does it acknowledge all these cliches though and even poke fun at itself? Absolutely. And that, plus all these other positives, is why I'm giving Uncharted The Lost Legacy a nine out of 10. Almost a perfect score, if not for some of the, the slower moments in Chapter 4 that really hinder the experience and some of that padded out fetch questing bullshit just gets in the way of an otherwise really tight package. And I'm all about tight packages. No homo. While this review will pale in comparison to Joe's sometimes 30 minute episodes, I hope it'll still be enough for a badass seal of approval. What do you think about that, Corporate Commander? That went better than expected! Just another pointless callback. I don't really give a shit what he has to say. All right, thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, I won't see you on the next Angry Joe show. Take care. You're lost, aren't no, you? No, I'm not lost, other Joe. <laughs> oh, <crap. laughs> Joe. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my tribute video to Angry Joe. He inspired me a lot over the years to start my own channel and give it my best. This is one in a string of videos I'm going to be doing, kind of acknowledging some of the uh, YouTube creators over the years that uh, kind of motivated me and inspired me and entertained me to no end. So thanks again, Angry Joe. And if 
there's someone watching that hasn't heard of him, check out his channel and subscribe. He's, he's worth it. Thanks for watching the video. Feel free to check me out on social media platforms for credibility purposes. Intern Sheila should be putting up some graphics for you to digest, I believe. Otherwise, you'll be out on the curb like your mom. Gotta move on. You can also check me out on patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Throw me a buck or two if you want. I run this channel alone. It's, a, it's almost a full-time job, honestly. Thanks for your time. Sheila, the graphics, now.